Hey, what's up everybody? Jake here and welcome to the hobby. Today we're going to be looking at some of the biggest winners and losers right now in the Pokemon card market. And one of the biggest winners that is shocking a lot of collectors is Twilight Masquerade. Who would have thought that Twilight Masquerade would be the most expensive value set to crack open right now. I didn't expect that and I think the vast majority of collectors didn't really expect that. There are some major big hits inside of Twilight Masquerade and we definitely call those out. Those were cards like the Greninja Special Illustration Rare, the Carmine Special Illustration Rare, and the Eevee Illustration Rares are some of the big ones. But it looks like that's really all it takes to truly carry a set is a small group of really gorgeous looking cards. The Ogre Pond Special Illustration Rares are definitely some of the weaker cards inside of this set, but overall, they're not that weak. Overall, the set is looking very, very solid. It's looking like the best value set to crack open right now from the Scarlet and Violet era, and that I think is really shocking. I don't think anyone expected the Greninja Special Illustration Rare to be going for upwards of $160. There are a ton of verified sales of this card at that price point, which shows that people genuinely love this card, which is really surprising. It's not a bad card. It's actually quite clearly one of the best looking cards from Twilight Masquerade, but for it to command that level of price, shows people really do want this card. It is that gorgeous, which I think is really, really interesting. So Twilight Masquerade, some of the biggest winners right now. And following in that footstep, we have illustration rares from the Scarlet and Violet era. A lot of the illustration rares from the Scarlet and Violet era are showing big jumps right now. The biggest of the bunch being the Magikarp illustration rare, which is going for upwards of $140 to $160 right now for some near mint copies, which is astounding. Once you go into the PSA 10 copies of the Magikarp, which is astounding for a, just an illustration rare from the Scarlet and Violet era. So that definitely begs the questions for some of the less popular illustration rares, but still very, very popular. Something like the Eevee from Twilight Masquerade is currently going for between $40 to $50 for a near mint ungraded copy. And if it follows in the footstep of the Magikarp, because it's just as challenging to pull the EV illustration rare, I've cracked open close to 200 booster packs of Twilight Masquerade so far, and we pulled one illustration rare EV. And it's very possible that if you crack open 200 booster packs, you might not find a single illustration rare EV. They are absolutely that rare. It's very challenging to pull any illustration rare in Twilight Masquerade. If you open up a whole entire booster box, you're probably pulling two to three illustration rares two to three so it's quite challenging to pull some of these art cards it's possible that the ev might command the same price as the magikarp in a year or two so it'll be interesting to see where times go the vast majority of illustration rares are still very cheap if you're a budget collector you can collect the vast majority of illustration rares because they're going for below a dollar the vast majority of illustration rares are below a dollar so you can pick up pretty much most sets for a very affordable price. But some of the more popular ones, the in-demand ones are commanding prices upwards of $30 plus, and in the case of the Magikarp, into well over $100, which is really astounding. So Illustration Rares is a bit of a double-edged sword. The expensive end, we have some really expensive $40, $50 plus ones, and on the cheap end, we have a ton of Illustration Rares that are still going for below a dollar. So there's actually a lot of opportunity there. If you like some of these cheaper illustration rares you can absolutely get a gorgeous collection for pennies on the dollar before we continue i'd like to thank drip for sponsoring today's video drip is one of the best live streaming service right now for you to crack open booster packs on and enjoy an experience with some of your favorite content creator i'll be cracking open a lot of twilight masquerade Pokemon 151 and a bunch of other really cool sets coming up this Saturday live. So if you want to check out my live stream, definitely click the link down in the description. New signups to Drip can get up to 250 free credit added to your account immediately. That's right, $250. If you're a brand new sign up to Drip using the link down in the description, you get between 10 to $250 free. So you can start buying some really cool Pokemon card products immediately. 250 bucks is almost 
three free Twilight Masquerade booster box. It's actually an insanely good deal. I've seen people get $250 free credits before and you can get between anywhere from 10 to 250. So it's honestly a really good deal. Just click the link down in the description, sign up and see how much free credits you get and don't miss my live stream because we're gonna be giving away a ton of free Twilight Masquerade booster packs and we've pulled some really cool cards for viewers before so definitely check it out. It'll also be simulcast on YouTube so you do not actually have to sign up to Drip to enjoy the live stream but you do have to sign up to Drip to enter the giveaway. Thank you so much again to Drip for sponsoring today's video. Now we're going to move on to some of the cards that are actually kind of losing values right now, which are some of the alt art chase cards. The alt art chase cards like the big five, including things like the Umbreon V Max, the Rayquaza V Max, the Giratina V, a lot of them are slowly dipping back down in value and that's sort of what I expect. They've been growing quite a bit in value. It was only a matter of time before that rubber band snaps and they start to decrease in value. Now that doesn't mean any of these cards are incredibly cheap right now. It just means that things are cooling down for the alt art market. So if you really want to pick up some of these cards and you completely are afraid of them going for well over a thousand dollars, well, now they're cheaper. Umbreon VMAX near mint copies are going for around $600 to even $700 for some copies. And cards like the Rayquaza VMAX and the Giratina V, which were pushing upwards of $500, have now returned to a more normalized state of around $400 for near mint copies. So if you really did miss out on some of these cards when they were spiking a month or two ago, and you don't think you were ever going to be able to pick one of these copies up, well, now they're a little bit more affordable and they might actually continue to cool down. I don't see the market for these cards really spiking anytime soon, but don't expect things to stay the same forever. Collectibles like to spike in value. By their very nature as collectibles, they like to spike in value. They don't slowly climb up. They reach an inflection point and they spike. It's very normal for a card to be a $400 card for four years and jump from $400 to $800 within months. That's how collectibles kind of work. They reach a weird pivotal point where everyone wants a copy for whatever reason and they spike. That's just how they work. And so it'll be interesting to see when the next big spike in alt art cards are going to be, but it could happen in two months. It could happen in four years. We don't really know. A lot of people are saying that the next big Pokemon card spike is going to be in the 30th anniversary, which is going to be happening in the next couple of years. I don't think the 30th anniversary of Pokemon is going to be that big of a deal. It's just another number. Obviously, the Pokemon company is going to make some big celebration, but they do so every single couple of years. So I don't expect the 30th anniversary to be any bigger than the 25th anniversary spike or the 20th anniversary spike. The big 25th anniversary spike really came down to the COVID pandemic bringing a lot of collectors back into the hobby and a lot of you guys might be back into collecting Pokemon cards that you used to enjoy as a kid. It just sort of happens one day when you decide, yeah, I, I kind of just want to get back into collecting. Some of the biggest winners right now we're actually seeing in sealed products. Booster boxes for some older sets like Fusion Strike and Lost Origin are making their way past $200. Fusion Strike booster boxes are now going for between $220 to $240 and Lost Origin booster boxes are going for between $190 to $200. So they are starting to get really expensive. If you're looking for some cheaper, more affordable products to pick up and you kind of miss the spike in the booster boxes, I highly recommend you check out some of the Build and Battle Stadium boxes. You can get just as many booster packs as booster boxes for a much more affordable prices. I can still find Silver Tempest Build and Battle Stadiums going for between $35 to $40. If you pick up three of those, you get the same amount of booster packs as a booster box. So three Build and Battle Stadium, I can pick those up for probably right around $100 to maybe $110. Bucks, and that's still way cheaper than a Silver Tempest booster box. So they are a great option, especially if you're someone that likes to play the trading card game. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Those are some of the biggest winners and losers right now in the Pokemon card market. And let me know what your thoughts are. I'll see you guys next time.